and I'm here with the Penn State Plant Science Department to talk to you more about some of these common nutrient deficiency and toxicity symptoms that we observe on our plants both in the greenhouse and in the field. In front of me is an example of phosphorus deficiency. So our plant over here is a healthy common bean plant. It's nice and green and just overall pretty happy. This plant over here, however, is experiencing a phosphorus deficiency. Now, phosphorus is really important for many, many plant uh, biological processes. It's key in the development of ATP, sugars, and nucleic acids. Phosphorus also facilitates those phosphodiester bonds that uh, hold amino acids together within a protein. Common symptoms that we might see of phosphorus deficiency are darkening of the leaves to this very dark green, and sometimes it can even turn purple since phosphorus deficiency stimulates the production of anthocyanins. Stunting is also a, a common um, symptom of phosphorus deficiency. One of the key signs though of phosphorus deficiency is if we were to look at the root system. So holding up these two plants, again, our healthy plant over here and our phosphorus deficient plant over here, um, we might be able to see that the, uh, the size of the root system is different relative to the size of the shoot. So our healthy plant over here has um, a normal uh, root to shoot ratio. However, our phosphorus deficient plant has a larger root system compared to, or relative to the size of the shoot. This is because the only way for a plant to acquire phosphorus from its surrounding environment is to increase root production. So phosphorus can only be required by exploring a greater soil volume. Phosphorus is more concentrated in shallower layers of the soil profile, and so much of the research within the Penn State Roots Lab has been focused on identifying root system characteristics that increase the concentration of that root system within the shallow layers uh, to better uh, forage for the phosphorus that's there. 